Today we're talking about making money with your camera. And again, there's lots of videos I think that you'll see where people are talking about making money with their camera. But how we make money with our camera is all about providing value, providing a value greater than the fees that we're charging. It doesn't mean charging less. It means valuing yourself, valuing your work, and providing a high quality service that's worth more than the customer is paying. Make sense? There are some essential, essential skills that you I've remember. learned. <laughs> There's some essential skills that I've learned that have made it so I can survive with my creativity and my camera. Us being a great photographer, that's a given. That's the road that we're all on. But in order to truly excel in this photography business, there are some essential mindset shifts that I believe all emerging photographers need. And that's what we're talking about today. So let's get into mastery. Mastery, I hope you guys have a pen and a notebook because today's episode is going to be valuable. First, let me explain the problems. Most people, if you ask them, what's the most valuable resource? They're going to say it's money, but that is not our most valuable resource. Money can be renewed. Our time, unfortunately, cannot. Time is something that is an unrenewable resource. So time is a factor. Your time and attention, that is the most valuable. It's the most valuable to everybody, our time and our attention. So how do you become a successful photographer? Well, the first thing that you do is don't diversify. <laughs> Warren Buffett advocated for focusing investments in your strongest area, especially when you're trying to be successful at something. So if you think about that with your photography career, don't diversify, right? So let's talk about focus versus multitasking. You've heard me say our most valuable resource is time. So if we only have 24 hours in the day and this is us, well, there's two different ways that we can approach our time. Version one looks like, hey, I like pictures. I'm gonna take pictures of lots of different things and see what thing works out, right? That's what we do. If you think of it like a cup and then another cup and another cup and another cup and all of these cups are your time and attention. And what you're doing when you diversify your niche is you're spending time putting liquid in all of these cups, reminding you we only have 100% of time, right? So we're dividing and we're putting 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%. And guess what? Nothing's happening. You've given a little bit of effort to every single one of these things. That's your 100% of effort. The smart photographer chooses a niche. The smart photographer does research and looks at all the different areas, chooses one, and then puts 100% of the effort into one cup. That cup quickly fills. You see that metaphor? When you're spreading your attention between lots of different things, not any single one thing can overflow. And here's the other thing. You're putting your effort into multiple different niches to see which one takes off. The problem is the one that's going to take off is the one that you give the most attention to. It's not the one that's paying off for you. It's the one that you're making pay off. It's the one that you give the most attention to. So if you think about our attention, our attention, we only have, again, 100% of it. So I argue against diversifying. We have to focus. This is what multitasking is. And we're dividing our attention between multiple different things. 
You start one thing, you start another thing, you start another thing, you start another thing. Successful photographers go all in on one thing. You don't make money by splitting up your attention. You make money by focusing all on one thing, on one niche. Let's talk about the journey of a photographer. Let's talk about the journey of a professional photographer and, and how it goes. There's five steps to this journey, by the way not diversifying your photography career, not diversifying is how you get disproportionate returns. If you love food photography and you put all of your effort into food photography, you get disproportionate returns than if you put 20% of your time into food photography, 20% into headshots, 20% into corporate headshots, 20% into fashion, and 20% into street photography. All of them you're going to fail at because not any single one of them you've put enough time or effort into to achieve any kind of expertise, any kind of cup overflow. Today's episode, I hope you guys are with me. So let's talk about the entrepreneurial journey. It's arrogant, by the way, to think that you spending 10% or 20% of your time on photography is going to work. You're already new on this journey of photography to begin with. It's not a smart bet to bet on you because you're only spending 20% of your effort on the act of being a professional photographer. So you're going to lose, by the way, to the ones that are spending 100% of their effort on one thing. So as I said, new shooters say, I want to try a bunch of things and see what works out, which is okay when you're in the early, early recon stages. The thing that's misunderstood, the thing that takes off is the thing that you work on. The, the thing that you work on the most, that's the one that blows up. You've heard me talk about specializing so much. And by the way, you want to spend as much Gifted time. Gifted member. Yo, let's go. Oki gifts five memberships. Oki, you are such a generous cat, man. There's five stages that a photographer goes through New member. when they're deciding that they want to be a professional photographer. This is how every new photographer's journey starts. New member goes like this. This is everybody's journey as a professional photographer. And it starts here, which is called uninformed optimism. This is where we start on that upward trajectory of trying to be a professional photographer. Hey, other people are making money with their camera. I can do this. I have a camera. So you're uninformed and you're optimistic. Hey, I can do this. I can pick up my camera. Let's go. This is how every entrepreneur's journey happens. And then they kind of hit a peak of uninformed optimism. And then they start this downward trajectory, which has them back here, which is called informed pessimism. So now you've gone on a trajectory of uninformed optimism and you're feeling, oh my God, this is great. I'm going to be a professional photographer. And then you're like, okay, nothing's happening. And then you start going back down again. And then you realize I actually don't know anything about this professional photography game. And in fact, this isn't going how I thought it was going to go. So this is number one. Number two is informed pessimism. Then you hit here, this dastardly spot, which is called the valley. I'm going to hide my camera here. The valley of despair. This is where people quit. This is the spot that people quit. And because they quit here, they never get to the next spot, which is informed optimism informed optimism once you're on that upward trajectory again where you started uninformed and optimistic you started on that upward swing then you were in, you became an informed pessimist and you realized this isn't as easy as i thought and then you hit the valley of despair guess what 
this is the place that people quit right here. Guess what they do then? Then they start the cycle all over again. Oh, okay, well maybe I'll be a painter. Maybe I'll be a writer. And they start again with step one, which is the uninformed optimism about this new venture. And then they come over here at this peak and then they're like, oh, this is also as hard as this other thing that I was trying to do. Oh shit. So now they're here again and they're in the informed pessimist, pessimistic phase. And then they hit here, which is that number three, that valley of doom. And guess what? They quit again and they go through down here and they start the whole cycle again. This is where everybody fails at photography. It's right here, but you have to stay with it. You have to stay with it and get to here, which is number four, which is informed optimism. Hey, this shit's starting to work. I'm starting to get a handle on this. I'm starting to understand how this photography business, and guess what happens after that? You stay with it and you hit number five, which is success, which is success. That's what happens. And this cycle of people never going out of the cycle of despair, they get stuck here. They don't look inwards to figure out why. Why am I stuck? Why is this not working? Five stages a person goes through when deciding if they want to be a professional photographer. Uninformed optimism, informed pessimism, valley of despair, informed optimism, and then achievement and success. Once you get to achievement and success, guess what? You can do it again with another niche. You can do it again with video. You can do it again. Once you've got to this spot, you can do this again because you're here and you're informed. I'm optimistic. I'm excited about starting this venture right now, but I know it's going to be hard. You're optimistic, but you already know that you're going to crest. You already know that you're going to come down to this spot where, wow, this is really hard. And you're going to come to a point in your business where you're going to want to quit. Every business goes through that. It's the photographers that stay the course and continue on that get to the informed optimism and get to the point where they're successful, which is why I have a photography business and I have a video business and I now have a YouTube business and a mentoring business. It's how you move forward. Yes or yes. By the way, leave a comment right now. I want you to hit a like button and then I want you to tell me exactly what stage of your photography business are you in? Are you in stage one? Are you in stage two, three, four or five. I guarantee many of you will be in that valley of despair. And that's why you found me. And that's why this content is resonating so much with you. Number one, uninformed optimism, informed pessimism, valley of despair, informed optimism, and then achievement. Let me know where you are. Okay, the long game. You see, this is a long game, right? Are you starting to see how I'm putting this to you at that this is a long game? Imagine, imagine someone asked you how long would it take you to build the tallest building that you can? Pretend you're an architect, right? And you say, oh, I can do it in a week with the knowledge that I have today. You're not an architect, obviously, because if you were an architect, you'd know that you can't build a building in a week. But someone asked you, how long would it take to build the tallest building that you can with the knowledge that you have today? What would be the result? How would you build the tallest building? Well, you'd get some materials and you'd race to the top. Your building would look probably like this, I would imagine. It would be block, 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 block. This is the path of least resistance to try to build the tallest building that you can in the shortest amount of time. 
yes or yes. Now, imagine you know that this building will never last, right? Like that's that's not a thing. You know that this building will never last, but you don't know what you don't know. You just got an opportunity. You're like, hey, I'm going to take that photo. I'm going to make that photo. I'm going to do that photo shoot. You don't know what you, what yes you don't know. Yes. You just do it. So now imagine if someone said they would four times the time to do the same task. Can you give me a little bit more time to make the tallest building that I can? And they say, okay, how much time do you want? I gave, you took, you said it was a week last time. What do you want now? A month? And you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, can you give me a month? And I'll make the tallest building that I can in a month. So what would you do? What you do first is you'd ask for a bit of help. You know more, but you still don't know what you don't know because not enough time has been allocated and you gave yourself more time, but still not enough time to build it right. So therefore it'll never last. And this building, this building looks like this. This building has maybe a little bit more of a structure because you had a little bit more time to build it and maybe it gets that high you know still you took four weeks to build a building you know that it's impossible for that building to last so now what if you gave yourself a year to do the same task how would you plan now that you've made two failed buildings who would you hire how would you make your building this time because you've had time to plan it and build it. It's a tall building now. And guess what? Because you had a year, it's a tall building that has a foundation, a smart foundation, because you've learned through your other two failed buildings that you can't not have a foundation. You can't not just go straight up. You, you kind of have to have a structure. And now you've built a building that is an incredibly tall building and it will last. And guess what happens then? The person that asked you to make this building, that person has friends. That person talks to a couple of people. They're like, hey, I got this guy. He made a building. He did it in a year. I mean, he tells his rich buddies that the, he knows somebody who can make a building in a year. So now what you've built is reputation. What you've built through two failures in one success. No one's going to remember the failures once you have a recent success. So now you have reputation. Reputation is the most important thing a photographer has. Because of your newly built reputation where you had a year to make a building and you succeeded, now the person that you made the building for has friends. Now you're tasked to make a another building the next year for a new client with more money. How would this building be different? Because you built a successful building in the past and you did it in a year, and because you went through all the pain points of the first two failed buildings, you've reached the maximum height that now you can reach for a tall building in 12 months, but you can build a better building the same height or a different style of building. What happens next? Because you've gone through the trials and the tribulations of accepting impossible tasks and you've learned you need more time. And because you didn't ask for enough time the first two times, that's a lesson that you learned. And now you're building a reputation on that lesson. Of course, this second year long building, you finish that building and it's world renowned. The owner of this new building, he has lots of rich friends. And guess what? You make more building. After making, after five years of making a single building a year, each one better than the last, now you're tasked to make two tall buildings in a single year. How would that year be different? How would you do it? There are three years of making two tall buildings a year. Now you're tasked to make three tall buildings per year. How would that year be different. You see, that architect metaphor is you've gone through the learning curve of failure and failure, and then you realize you need more time. You need more time to plan. And what you also have to realize is there's quality over quantity when it comes to marketing. You have to actually 
get amazing at photography before you ramp up your marketing practice. You have to practice serving clients during your unpaid opportunities so you learn about the importance of being an amazing service for somebody. Even if you're not getting paid, you can still learn how to be an amazing experience for someone. The importance of focusing on the quality of your photography service and the product that you provide, which is the photography, it's worth focusing on your service and the quality of the product before you go insane on marketing efforts. A good reputation is amazing. A bad reputation is like getting sprayed by a skunk. You only get one opportunity to make a first impression. The important thing is to know that a good reputation and word of mouth are more sustainable for long-term growth. I talked about that architect and once you have a product which is your camera and your service as a photographer and you do that work for people, you have to keep practicing until that service for that person is so good that that person actually becomes a megaphone for you. That person becomes your evangelist. You're not ready to market until your service is so good that everybody that you photograph wants to talk about how amazing that you are, how amazing that you are, because word of mouth is the most powerful marketing that we have and it's all based on reputation. Reputation is sustainable. Reputation is how you build long-term growth. How have I been a photographer for 33 years professionally? Reputation. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about in this section here is team building. You kinda have to have the right people around you. If you're an emerging photographer, what I did was I, when I was an emerging photographer, is I needed to be next to one, peers. I went to photography school. Everybody there was trying to be a photographer and I gravitated towards the best in the class because I was also, we were number one and two, the best in the class. So we hung out and we shared everything. And guess what happened? We both got better together. We both started shooting for the Globe and Mail. We both started shooting celebrities and both of us became successful because we shared and grew together. Doing it alone, it's insane. You need to build a team. I, I'm part of your team. Even if you don't know it yet, even if you're shy, I'm part of your team. You have to use me.